Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. You know they say the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. Whatever you give us, we want a little bit more. We want something different. And math teachers are pretty bad at this. And I'm a math teacher, so I guess I'm going to make your life difficult. But let's say you've got, you, you've got an equation, and you know that A, the area, equals the base times the width. Well, isn't that enough? I mean, my goodness. The area equals the base times the width. No, no, no. Math teachers want something else. We want to know what the base is. If we know the area and the width, what's the base? I don't know. That just seems awfully complicated. Well, actually, it's not that hard. And you don't have to learn anything new to accomplish this. All your little algebra rules that we've been talking about for the last several lessons are going to show you exactly what to do to solve these kind of problems. Let's say we had a problem x equals y plus z and they told us that we need to solve for y. We need to figure out what y equals in terms of x and z. Well all we do is isolate the y. All we do is move the stuff that's cluttering that y to the other part of the equation and then we will have an expression that says y equals something and we've solved for y. Let's do that. First of all, I've got, on the side with the y, I've got a plus z. And I need to get rid of that to isolate the z. So how do I get rid of a plus z? I subtract a z. And if I subtract a z from the right side, I've got to subtract a z from the left side. Well, we're basically done. The z's cancel each other out because one's positive and one's negative, And it leaves just y on the right side. And the left side now reads x minus z. That wasn't hard, was it? Well, let's look at another one. Let's say we had x equals y divided by z, and we wanted to solve for y. Same process. I want to isolate the y so it reads y equals something. And right now, the y is um, uh, changed by a divided by c. So i got to get rid of that divided by c. How do I get rid of a divided by c? I multiply by z. And you'll see I use this little star symbol for, for multiply. That's because if I put another x in here, it would just be very confusing. That star symbol will always mean multiplies by. All right, so I'm going to multiply the right side of the equation by z. And I'm going to multiply the left side of the equation by z. And again, we're basically done. I've got divided by z times z. They cancel each other out and leave just y. And the left side of the equation is x times z, which I can write xz. So y equals xz. Let's look at a practical example. We've got a rectangle over here, and we know that the area of the rectangle e equals the base times the height. The base we're going to call b. The height we're going to call h. Well, let's say that we want to solve for b. We want to figure out what b is in terms of the uh, height and the area. Well, we know that area equals base times height. And I'm trying to isolate b, so I've got to get rid of this times h. And to get rid of a times h, I divide by h. And I have to do that on both sides of the equation. Again, we're, we're done. This is easy, isn't it? I've got h divided by h, which is nothing, wipes each other out, and leaves just b on the right side of the equation. And the left side of the equation is the area divided by the height. The base equals the area divided by the height. Let's look at another one. I've got the area equals the base times the height, and I want to solve for this time for height. So... I want to isolate that h, which means I've got to get rid of that uh, times b. And to get rid of a times b, I divide by b. And if I divide the right by b, I've got to divide the left by b. 
my B's cancel each other out and on the right side I've got nothing but H left and on the left side I've got A divided by B equals the height. Try this one. Hit your pause key, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Okay, I've got an expression, 3x equals y, but I want to solve it for x. I want to find out what x equals in terms of y, not what 3x equals. How am I going to do that? Same as always. I want to get rid of this 3, and if I want to get rid of a times 3, I divide by 3. And I have to divide both sides of the equation by 3. So now i got 3x divided by 3, which leaves just x, and on the right side, I got y divided by 3. So x equals y divided by 3. Okay, I got a triangle here, and I know that the area of the triangle is 36, and I know the base of the triangle is 12. I don't know what the height of the triangle is, and I'm supposed to solve for h. And for those of you who don't, don't remember the formula, the area of a triangle equals one-half times the base times the height. Hmm, I wonder how I'm going to do this one. Oh, now I see. The area equals one-half the base times the height. Well, let's try to isolate that h, and we, that means we got to get rid of the one-half and the b. So I've got nothing but an h on the right side of the equation. Well, let's get rid of that one-half first. Now, we normally, if we were multiplying by one-half and trying to get rid of that, we divide by one-half. But dividing by one-half is the same thing as multiplying by two. Two times one-half equals one. So we can eliminate it by multiplying by two. But if I'm going to multiply the right side by two, I got to multiply the left side by two. And then I can rewrite the equation, 2a equals base times height. Now, I want to isolate the h, so I got to get rid of the b. And to get rid of a times b, I divide by b. And I have to divide both sides of the equation by b. Now I can rewrite it so it looks like this, 2a divided by b equals h. Now let's solve the equation. I know what a is. They told me that a was 36. And they told me that b was 12. So I'm going to replace my a with 36 and my b with 12. And I get 2 times 36 divided by 12. 2 times 36 divided by 12 is, uh, solves to h equals 6. Your job pays you, and P what's what we'll call the, what, uh, the weekly total pay you earn, your job pays you P an hourly rate of $5 per hour times the number of hours that you work, and we'll call the number of hours you work H. Plus it pays you expenses. The formula to determine your weekly pay is Total pay, P, equals the hours you worked times $5 per hour plus expenses. Last week you earned a total of $125 and your expenses were $15. How many hours did you work? Hit the pause button, solve the problem, and then hit the forward key to see the answer. Okay, the formula is P equals H times five dollars plus E expenses. If I want to put that in English, I'd say it this way. Your total weekly pay equals the number of hours you worked times five dollars per hour plus whatever expenses you had. And the question we've got is how many hours did you work? Well, let's figure that out. Again, P equals 5h plus e. Now, I want to isolate h, 
So the first thing I got to do is get rid of that E. And to get rid of a plus E, I subtract E. And I have to do that from both the left and the right side of the equation. So now I can rewrite this P minus E equals 5H. Now I want to get rid of that 5, which is 5 times H. And to get rid of a 5 times, I divide by 5. And I divide both sides by 5. So now I got P minus E divided by 5 equals 5H divided by 5. I can simplify that 5H divided by 5 to just H. Are we done? Nope, not quite. Now, I'm going to substitute the information we had in the problem, or we were given in the problem, for P and for E, so I can then solve for H. So, we were told in the problem that last week you earned a total of $125. So, I replace P with $125. And they also tell you in the problem that your expenses were $15. So, instead of minus E, I write minus 15. And the bottom part of the equation doesn't change. It's divided by 5. So now I got 125 minus 15 divided by 5 equals the number of hours you worked. 125 minus 15 is 110. And 110 divided by 5 is 22. So you worked 22 hours last week. Okay, we're supposed to solve for z, and the equation is 2z plus x equals y minus 4. Well, let me show you how to do that. First thing I need to do is get rid of this plus x. So I come down here and subtract an x. So I've got plus x minus x, which will cancel each other out. But I've got to subtract x from the other side of the equation as well. So now I can rewrite this as 2z equals y minus x minus 4. Okay, now I want to get rid of this 2. So I leave just z, which is what we're trying to solve for. And to get rid of a 2 times, I divide by 2. And I have to divide both sides of the equation by 2. So now the left side of my equation becomes just z and z equals y, the, the expression y minus x minus 4, end of expression, divided by 2. Well, I hope you learned a lot about rewriting equations and formulas, and you understand it pretty well now. But it's time to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and Pull down the worksheet and try that. And also, when you're done with the worksheet, try the interactive quiz to test your skills. Come back again soon.